my name is Eloise. Joining me today is Rafilwe. Hi everyone. Today we will be exploring the idea of gradient, also known as slope. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to calculate the gradient of a line segment. Have a look at this truck and this car driving down a steep slope. Did you see how worried the driver of that car was looking? I don't blame her. Would you feel safe if you saw that sign that said 1 to 5? I've never noticed it before. What does that sign mean? That sign tells us how steep the road is. Really? Then how steep is it? Well, let's have a look. The sign gave a ratio of 1 to 5. It means that for every one meter we go down, we go five meters across. I just hope that truck had good brakes. I suppose you are wondering what steep hills have to do with maths. Well, today we are going to look at the steepness of lines on the Cartesian plane. But before we do that, I would like to investigate a few interesting slopes. Have a look at these. You won't see any of these signs on the road. Let me show you why. This sign says that the slope is 1 to 0. How steep do you think the line would be? The ratio tells us that we would go down one unit and we move zero units across. This would be a cliff. No car could drive down the side of the cliff. This sign says the gradient is 0 to 1. This means that we go down 0 units for every 1 unit across. This kind of slope is no slope at all. It's just flat. What about a slope of 1 to 1? For every 1 meter you go down, you move the same distance horizontally or across. Now we are ready to look at the gradient of a line on the Cartesian plane. To begin with, we focus on the axes. On the x-axis, the x values are increasing from left to right. Similarly, the y values are increasing from the bottom to the top. In the Cartesian plane, a slope is uphill when the y values increase as the x values increase. In other words, as x gets bigger, y also gets bigger. This will be the same as going uphill from the left to the right. The slope of an uphill is positive. A slope is downhill when the y values decrease as the x values increase. The gradient of a downhill is negative. This is an important thing to remember. An uphill has a positive gradient and a downhill has a negative gradient. We are also interested in the steepness of a line or the gradient of a line. We need to know how many units to go up or down and how many to go across. Rafilwe, where do you think we should start? Let me see. I think the best place to start is with two points. You are quite right. Let's start with the two points A and B. The coordinates of A will be 1, 2, and the coordinates of B will be 5, 3. And let's join them to form the line segment AB. Because we are talking about lines, right? Now let's look at this line segment. We can see that as we move from left to right, the y values increase. What we need to work out is by how much the y values increase. What do you think the increase is, Rafilwe? Hmm, the y value at A is 2 and uh, the y value at B is 3. So the difference will be 1 unit up the y-axis. So I guess this is just 1. Now that we know how much the y values have changed, we must calculate the difference in the x values. Okay, so the x value at a is 1 and the x value at b is 5. So the difference will be 4. 
Yes, a difference of four is a distance of four units on the Cartesian plane. It is this distance here between one and five. But how do you plan to write it down? Hmm, I didn't think of that. But I suppose we could write it like the slopes on the signs, like one to four. Yes, but let me show you another way to write this. When you write one to four, it is the same as 1 over 4 or 1 divided by 4. So you can also say that the numerator or the top number is the vertical distance and the denominator or the bottom number is the horizontal distance. That sounds complicated. Could you show me that again? Sure. We can say that the vertical distance is the difference between the y values and the horizontal distance is the difference between the x values. Which means that the gradient is the difference in the y values divided by the differences in the x values. Difference means to subtract, right? Exactly. So the gradient is the second y value minus the first y value divided by the second x value minus the first x value. So the gradient is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Good. Now we have a way to write our answer down for the gradient of the line joining the points A and B. If we label the points, then using the formula we found and then substitute, the gradient will be 3 minus 2 divided by 5 minus 1. So the gradient is 1 divided by 4. You also notice that the gradient is positive, so the line segment must be uphill. Now, there is a short way of indicating the words the gradient of the line segment AB. We write M with a little AB next to it. So M of line AB is 1 divided by 4. There we go. We have a way to write down the gradient of any line segment. Can I make a guess about something here? Will a downhill line segment like this one have a negative gradient? Absolutely right. The gradient of PQ, which I can write as M of PQ, will be negative. If you work this one out, starting with Q's values, you will get negative 1 minus 1 divided by 3 minus negative 1. So that is negative 2 over 4, which is negative a half. The line segment has a negative gradient, so it is downhill if you look at it from left to right. There is one last question we need to consider today. Is the gradient the same for the whole line? I think so. Um, yes, the gradient is the same. You are correct. The reason a line segment is straight is because the gradient or slope is constant. That means it stays the same. Let's see how it works. Choose a point, any point, and choose a gradient. Okay, my point will be negative 5 and negative 2, and my gradient will be 3 divided by 2. Thank you. Now we plot the point negative 5, negative 2. You have chosen a positive gradient, so we will be going uphill from here. The gradient tells us that if we go up 2 units and across 3 units, we will find a point on the line segment. If we keep doing this, we will get other points that all lie on the line. Because the gradient does not change on a line segment, we say it is constant. We have covered a lot of ground today. Let's take a look at what we did. Today we developed an understanding of gradient. When a line is uphill from left to right, it has a positive gradient. When a line is downhill from left to right, it has a negative gradient. To find the gradient of any line segment, we can use the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The gradient of a straight line 
is constant. Well, now it's time for our task and time to test what we have learned. Calculate the gradient of line segment PQ with P, 3, 2 and Q, 5, 6. And thanks for your help, Rafilwe. I'm just going to write the new formula in my book. Bye. See you next time. Goodbye.